One of the first couple of times that I had been surfing, there's a cis man that was that came through and was like, it's not that manly to like surf with a pink board. It's just the ways in which surfing gets normalized. It's only for manly men who are cis and who are straight. And I'm not about that. I'm just like, show up however you need to um, and however you want to, and it'll be beautiful. Long before the coming of the white man, surf riding was a popular sport in Hawaii. I don't think surfing was all, always such an exclusive sport. I think once white males started taking the helm, it got more, this is my thing and this is my wave, this is my sport. But yeah, it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> it should be a place of openness and acceptance and freedom. So I surfed professionally on the WQS tour for about six years. Here you are. That was my first trip ever. Whoa. Barbados. This was one of my favorites because I felt like I didn't have to like put makeup on and I have like messy hair in it. When I started to realize I was gay, immediately I realized it was also something I couldn't be and be in the surf industry. You know, that's not the image they're trying to portray. You couldn't really be out if you wanted to have sponsorship. There's just so many barriers for queer folks to overcome before they have the space, the money, the capacity to even think about something like surfing. After several years of living in San Francisco, Kyla Langen and her partner Nick Brisebois decided they wanted to bring more queer people into the sport they loved. Do you all welcome boogie boarders? I'm new to the area, new to Pacific waves, and looking for community. I hope to learn to surf one day. Perfect. We started taking queer people down to the beach and putting them in wetsuits and giving them all different types of boards, and we started to build community. What began as some friendly lessons is now the Queer Surf Collective. Surfing really allows you to have fun in your body, and queer people haven't always had access to that in their genders and in their bodies. I thought it would just be nice to start with a little intro. We're here to kind of connect with one another. Hi, Riley. I use they, them pronouns. I actually took like 20 years off of surfing, so this is, I feel like a beginner again. It's been so incredible to go from, you know, one community where you kind of have to hide who you are and where you're not super welcome to this other community where you're just free to be exactly who you are. It's so awesome to be able to give this to the surf community. Uh, hi folks, I'm Kyle. I use any pronouns. I've been surfing for a little under a year and I just think the ocean is majestic. Kyle Neal has always been drawn to the water. It was a really powerful and magical experience the first time I got into the water. I first got involved with Queer Surf um, earlier this year. It was the first time that I got to paddle out with, you know, multiple queer people at once and be able to have it be really affirming the entire time. And we are able to like show up for one another, right? So. Um, if there's an instance of homophobia or transphobia that happens, right, we will intervene and or just check to see how the other person is doing. We make sure people know the rules and the etiquette within surfing. And then when it's just us, we kind of like to challenge that. And so we like to party wave. The magic really happens when we're actually in the water. Um, and so we get to um, learn from one another, we get to cheer each other on. I love to like dance, some folks are like singing out in the water, and so we just get to be our like full and beautiful selves. Just being on a wave with a bunch of other queers, it's just such a moment of almost rebellion and of just pure joy. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.